Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the next episode of the Apex Show. I hope you're great. And today I'm going to be speaking about going pro. I'm not sure if there is if it even isn't a book named GoPro. Uh, just now I realized, but never mind. Um, essentially, today when I was having my lunch break, I just randomly uh, started doing some research for a few minutes about athletes and professional athletes and how they spend their time and essentially like just really breaking down the inputs of what professionals do because when you have you have two kind of like two types of people if they're ambitious like the first ones are the ones that have big goals and that set big goals for themselves and the second ones are are those ones who kind of are better in terms of planning essentially like just they they know that there's like certain amount of volume that you need to tackle and that, that you need to go through and that you need to essentially like just utilize and, and make use of or do, maybe that's the better word to describe this, and only then you will have a good shot of actually achieving the results you want to achieve. And yeah, just I, I kind of spend a lot of time just researching about how long it actually usually takes and not how long, but how how much effort it takes j- just to really become good at something. Great example. I researched some NBA players and um, because I, I never really even had a deeper look, I, I've been uh, to Miami Heat uh, a year ago in February last year um, to, to see their game, but I never really uh, delved, delved deeper into how actually the back back end works there with the players, how they train, etc, etc. Et and now, uh, during the launch break, I essentially like just had a look on, on their sh- sh- schedules. And it's pretty rough in terms of how much do they train. It's like, okay, it's like a normal job that you have. Like, you just wake up and you pretty much like train for three hours. Then you, uh, like, let's say in Monday, you train for three hours. Then you train, um, you have you have one, one hour break and then you train some more, maybe a different type of training. And then in the evening, you watch tapes. I mean, like it's like watching tapes. You're essentially watching um, other... You're watching yourself about how, how good you, you performed and perhaps you're thinking of how how, how you could have bets done, done that stuff. And if you look at many of these, and yeah, maybe like the, then on Tuesday, let's say if this was Monday, then on Tuesday, maybe different type of training, again, like shooting or shooting drills, conditioning, everything else. And then let's say on Wednesday, there would be a match um, or like, a, yeah, I'm not sure if that's the yeah, match. Uh, on Thursday, you, you're doing some rehab. On Friday, uh, let's say you're doing um, like some more training and Saturday, another match in a different city. Perhaps you need to fly somewhere and, and like just keep repeating this. And sometimes, you know, like six, seven days a week. I'm not really sure. Like I didn't really go um, into much depth, but I sent, like didn't spend hours on that. It was just during my lunch break. But at the same time, it's just even if you look at these athletes, Many times, like they're just super, super, super restricted in terms of what they actually spend their time on. That they're just they just treat their the thing that they're working on as a top priority. And in terms of if you should just quantify work, that's even a great question to ask. Like, okay, essentially, what's work for you? And what's work is work when you're creating value I, I, I like for example i treat work as when i'm working towards my vision or at least like towards the goal, goals that i have for myself and like actively working towards them not like just passively waiting or something like that like just actively taking steps forward if you imagine like like just or you drop yourself driving along your own like essentially like if i make making progress forward that 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 means work for me like just, just actively, actively working on that, creating value. And yeah, it's it's just, if if you have really, like there, there are these people who, who say that they want to be on the, like let's say like there, there are so many people who want to join the NBA, but the, I even knew one guy from Czech Republic now for a pretty long time and he was one of the best players in, in Czech Republic at all. Um, when he was like 14, 15 years old. And 
he was really aiming for that for that vision just to just to go there but then in the end like essentially like he had the vision but he didn't have the drive the drive that would that, that would so to say enable him just to go freaking all out and, and let's say train for eight hours a day because that's what's required a great example of this was even kobe Bryant. um it's well known that he trained just so freaking hard like all, all the time and just shooting drills in the middle of the night just to get better and and that's essentially it that going pro maybe a different spin-off on what i said what i i essentially even wanted to say is that like if you even look at swimmers or even basketball players and like different kind of sports people they're not doing anything that special even football players sports people in general like you have certain rules that were predefined and when you're training for something you're pretty much just practicing <laughs> the, the same techniques there all the time again and again like shooting drills you're just shooting and that's it uh, and you're just doing doing it all the time even though you, if you're let's say like lebron james that's already almost 40 and has been doing this for the past 20 years i mean like the the training routine doesn't change you're still doing the same if you're a swimmer also had a look on, on their schedule and it's like okay uh on average like those really top swimmers spend 32 hours a week in, in the pool and like that's like just 32 hours in the pool and then there's an additional conditioning and other stuff as well and, and just okay imagine this like and, and this is this is a pro level and you just like try to translate that towards okay if you're actually working on something like say university or if you're working on a business or something else like great that's that also requires for you to go pro if you look at sports people like these maybe like have periods when they don't draw drink alcohol when they're just like super freaking focused how does that apply to you like are you a pro or aren't you a pro and the, the biggest disproportionate returns you can get only when you go pro because that's the moment and, and maybe like additionally that this might not be that fast like essentially it might take a few years just for you to get like like j just for you to stay in that that focus mode if you look at like even the sports people it's just like they're in their focus they're locked in pretty much all the time they're training all the time even in the off season they have some drills here and there because they can get out of the out of the like the physique and everything else that they have their preparedness just keep repeating this for, for for as long as your contract lasts uh, which is kind of great so um yeah maybe j just even a technique that i was using or just maybe a point of view that i was applying is that look at the top people in your field like whatever field you are you are in or whatever field you want to operate in and then look at what's the schedule of the people like what what are they spending your time on maybe like in terms of if the people are very successful maybe just like downgraded a bit and like because if you have well, let's say if you have if you're like if you're up there already and you have let's say a team and you're just managing team and you're just starting off like you might not be able to afford um just stop of 20 people working and just giving you much more leverage on the time that you have and yeah so maybe just have have certain perspective but at the same time okay just try to mirror what they're doing like just if they're if a guy is on a certain level and he's like just really busting his ass off but at the same time he's just really killing it then it might mean that you might have to do something very similar if you're going in the same direction and just trying to help us a half us stuff n n doesn't really pay off most of the times it just comes back and bites you back in the ass so yeah like in terms of like just, just this speaking also from my uh my perspective that in the past like um there are things that i would have definitely done differently in terms of how much i how much effort i put in every single day i i just have the feeling that like everyone somehow wants to skip the boring work and just the hard work and ju it's just searching for the shortcut and that's even the way like even now i'm looking way differently on receiving and also giving advice because 
it's like okay if, if a person asks me like okay like what should i do differently i can't see results but it's the same thing like I just like many times know that the people are just doing the right things, but they're just not patient enough with the stuff that they're doing. It's like, it's the same thing as if you're, let's say, having a real great diet, you're going to the gym, you started a new routine, like it's the fourth day of the of the new year, everything is going all right for you. And now, essentially, like, regardless of how hard you try, you won't, you won't lose like a lot of weight within a short period of time. Um, or you can, but I mean, like, then there's a second question of actually if you keep it down like the weight or if you're just getting it back back up and like just all of these shortcuts of how i can do this without feeling pain how i can like i mean it's constraints work from a certain degree um i guess it's best to achieve certain things before you actually um like before giving you yourself more constraints but it's I guess like I I know examples of people who have done some like just really crazy stuff. So um, I guess it, it, it's fine to the define constraints or on what you essentially want to achieve in the first place, and then just go for that. So uh, just the main point that I'll I like to drive drive home is that there's even the, you you become a different person when you decide to go pro. You you just stop tolerating most scraps that's out there. You just become much more profound and focused in your effort and that that's like that changes you from the outside and both from the inside and it's just like you start operating on a whole new, whole new level and the majority of the things you just you just even forget about the th- stuff that doesn't work, doesn't matter you just like are super focused on the things that actually matter and go for them and it usually works or at least I've found it out that like, there's even this one book named The One Thing, a very great book. And it describes the process of l- placing your attention to the activities that will give you the highest return on investment. And in terms of if you, you just kind of maybe imagine that you have a set of dominoes and then you just, then your main task is to just find the one domino that's in the beginning of the of the whole entire like line or sequence or however you want to call that and then you just tackle it and let it fall if you just do this then all the other dominoes will fall as well and that's that's the main that's your main job like sometimes sometimes like i guess sometimes it's great to be focused on volume and sometimes it's necessary at the same time it's like if you're grinding yourself out and going in the wrong direction so to say it might not be the best shot for you. Sometimes just opting for a different different option that might be more beneficial for you, might or like give you better returns might might be of a better option. Might be a better shot. But yeah, I'll leave it up for you. The main point here is that GoPro. Don't forget Go, GoPro. It's like the camera. <laughs> ah, never mind. Okay, I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Bye.